So now it's time to start with the JavaScript part for the project, which is the node taking application. So for that, we need to use the script.js file. Now instead of that, first we need to get the reference to these particular element, which is the add node and also the reference of this main element. Now before starting the code inside the JavaScript, first I'm going to come back to the style.css. I'm going to just simply selecting this node one, which is the node division, because we want to add this node division like dynamically. So I'm going to comment it out these particular things. Okay, this is the node division. So I have actually commented out. Right now, if I control save it, you can see we are just having only one element present that is this particular add node, which is the button, and also this main one. So we need to get the reference of these two ones inside the script.js. So we are going to use the query selector and initializing it inside the variable. So first is the add btn. So I'm going to name my variable as add btn, then document.query selector. Now it is actually a query selector. So we need to specify the type of the selector as well by adding the hash symbol and also the add btn, the name of the ID selector. All right, then I'm going to duplicate this particular code it's by pressing the shift, alt and down arrow key. And after that here, it is actually a main container, which is the main division. So I'm going to change it to main. All right, and if I control save it, you can see we have these reference of these particular element inside these particular variables then after that we need to set the listener to the button which is the button because whenever we click on this button we want to display a node if i click it here then you can see then there is a new sticker added to the web browser so that is what we want to achieve so add event listener so we want to listen to the click event so on click of the button we want to add the listener after that we need to specify the comma and here we need to specify the add note which is the callback that we want to create all right so first is the click then second is the add note we have added the listener to the button so over here we need to use a function then add note and then to start its block of the code after that we need another function which is a function which is actually for the save note okay then we need to use the save note function Right, and then we need another function to actually load the node from the local storage of the browser. So these are the three functions that are required. So first we need to create these node sticker dynamically by using the JavaScript. So for that we need to create the code means with that we need to add the code inside the add node function. So we want to create a node. So I'm going to create the constant of the node. And we need to initialize it so we need to first here use the document that is this one document dot create element so we want to create the element so we want to create the division element all right remember the structure of the code we actually having a division and then these are the things that we need to create all right so coming back to the script.js again after creating the variable of the division which is a node then with the use of this particular node variable we need to add the class so we are going to add the class by using the class list and we want to add a note class list so coming back to you can see here we have a class note so we want to add the class it which is actually a note so here i'm going to specify the note all right then to terminate that particular code after that we need to update its inner html so inner html inside of that we need to use the template string so that i can split the code into multiple lines all right so this is this template string which is a key present at the top of your tab key and also at the bottom of the escape key instead of that we need to actually create the html structure that is this particular html structure so i'm going to copy this particular html structure which is the division tag and after that we need a text area and inside of the division under the class tool we have these particular i tags which is the font awesome tags so we need to just simply copy these lines of the code and coming back to the html part means the script.js part here we need to paste it then i'm going to format this particular one for way so the text area part is not actually copied so we also want a text area coming back to the script.js again after the end of the division we need to paste the text area code as well okay so this is what we have now done with the template string after creating the node 
then we need to get the reference of these particular ones inside the variables all right these are the three elements the first is the save icon the second is a trash icon then also a text area so with the use of this not variable we need to get the reference of these one inside the variables so here we're going to create the const and the first is the trash icon equal to then we need to use the node dot query selector because we need to actually specify the type of this selector as well so here it is actually a class selector so we need to specify the dot and also the trash all right now we need to add this class name inside this particular one because these are the class names of the font or some for the styling of the tags so that we can get these tags so these are the names used by the font or some but we need to actually provide our own name of the class so that we can use it and apply the code so for that here we need to use the trash so trash this will be the name for the trash icon and then here we need to use the save this will be the name for the save icon which is a class name and I'm going to duplicate this code into multiple time. Then this will be our save icon. And here we're going to provide the class name as save. You can see. And then we need to use the text area, which is the text area tag. And here we're going to specify the text area because it is actually a tag. So we just need to only specify the name of the tag. Now we have the reference of these all three elements inside these particular variables. So now we can set the listeners to these particular variables. All right. So here we need to first set the trash icon. So trash icon add event listener. Instead of that, we need to listen to the click. So whenever we click on the trash icon, we want to remove the note. So here I will be using the arrow function, which is an anonymous function, that function without any name. So it will be like arrow function. Actually, here we need to add the arrow. This is the arrow function okay and inside of the arrow function we need to just simply use the note dot remove that is this particular function all right and then we need to call the save notes so whenever we remove the notes we need to call the save notes function right now it is not going to do anything because we have not specified any code inside the save note function all right so this is the code for the trash icon then whenever we enter any data inside the text area we want to actually call the save note function all right and also whenever we click on the save function means the save icon we want to save the data of the note so here we need to use the save icon dot add event listener add event listener instead of that we need to listen to the click listener and here we want to call the save note function is the callback and then inside the text area that is this one we want to listen to the input of the text area because we don't want to click on it we want to listen to the input of the text area and then we need to call the save note function again all right next time to specify the code inside the save note function but before that whatever we have done inside this particular one we need to append it to the main that is this one all right so here we need to use the main dot append child that is this one append child instead of that we need to pass the node because at the end we want to attach the node to the main container and that is done with this particular line of the code if i control save it and if i click on button you can see we get the node now if i click on trash icon you can see we are able to remove the node but if i just enter some data here and if i refresh it you can see the note is also refreshed and also the data of the text is washed out because we have not added the code for the save note function so coming back to the script.js now it's time to specify the code inside this particular save note function so here i'm going to create the variable of the notes because we want to store the notes so it is actually a notes that is a one document dot get element by id or i can use here a query selector all because we want to select all the nodes that is the reason we have actually named the variable as nodes and i'm going to use the query selector because if there is more than one nodes then we want to select all of them so that is the reason of class by using the node so that is why i have used here a query selector all and under that node we have the text area so we want to select all the text area okay so you know, that will be referenced will all of these reference means all of the reference of this particular text area will be stored inside this notes variable which is a type of constant variable 
then we need to use the const data and it is actually of type array all right so we are going to define an array of type data now i have pressed the control s that is the reason everything is actually refreshed because we are actually using the live server extension that is the reason the things is actually changed inside the browser now we want to look through all the nodes and we want to push those nodes values inside the local storage of the browser by using the push function of the array so for that i will be using here a loop which is the traditional for loop so here is the for loop and instead of the for loop i will be using the let i is equal to zero okay and after that we need to use the i is smaller than according to the length of the nodes so nodes dot length we want to run this particular loop according to the length of the available nodes then we need to increment the counter all right and after that inside of that we need to use the data because we want to post the content inside the data array so we want to push it by using the push function of the array all right now the things according to the values like nodes means the value according to the so if there is a zero suppose we have like these two nodes so this is actually present at the zeroth index this is actually present at the one index first the content of this particular text area means this particular node will be pushed to this array when the value of the counter is actually zero because right now it's going to run only for the two times for the zero and the another way is actually for the one okay then in the second index it's going to add the data right so this is how the loop will be works here according to the value of this particular i it's going to Post the data inside this particular array all right and here after that we need to actually push what we want to push the value we don't want the tag we want to push the value of the text area which is actually a reference stored inside the nodes actually i press the control as inside the browser because my cursor inside the browser so after adding the code i have actually pressed the control s again that is the reason the everything is actually washed out from the browser window after adding this particular for loop we want to store this particular data inside the local storage as well so for that we need to use the data so if the length of the data is actually equals to zero so first we need to add the condition if it is equal to zero then we want to actually perform the if block so we want to remove everything from the local storage so first we need to select the local storage remove items means the length of the nodes means the array is actually empty now this particular array is actually denoting the data inside the local storage of the browser means if the data is zero the length of the array is zero it means there is nothing inside the nodes so that is the reason we want to remove the local storage as well so local storage remove item and here we need to remove what we want to remove the nodes key okay this is actually the nodes key that we want to remove then we need to perform the else block inside of the else we want to use the local storage again local storage we want to set the item so what we want to set we want to set the nodes so here we need to set the nodes and we want to set these particular nodes inside the json format by using the stringify means creating the json in a form of string so that it will become easy for us to actually get the data once we are actually starting the code inside the load node function so you can see now we are able to save the data inside the browser so if i refresh it if i enter here some data and if i just refresh it you can see now the web page means the note is not present here but the data will be saved inside the browser storage now if i press f12 key and i come back to the local storage at the port number you can see that thing that i have added here is actually presented now if i can here delete it and if i again click it here we get the node sticker so this is you can see as soon as i enter the data it's actually updated inside the browser storage as well because we are actually listening to the input listener of the text area control save it now the page is refreshed and we also not able to see the ui part of the node but we are actually able to save the data inside the local storage of the browser in a form of json you can see here it is actually stored in a form of json now it's time to start the code inside the load node so i'm going to close this particular console window like this one because i want to start the code inside the load function once we are done with it 
then we are going to test the entire application again inside of the load node function we want to load the node so first we need to here create the variable which is actually ls nodes which is short for the load nodes then we need to actually parse the data so that is the reason we have actually converted the code means to save the node in the form of json so we can call the json.parse function so we want to pass the local storage of the browser so here we need to use the local storage dot so we want to get the item so here we actually set the item to the local storage now we need to get the data from the local storage so for that we have the get item function inside of the get item function we need to specify the key so we want the nodes because we are setting the data in a form of nodes key so remember both of these key names should be same otherwise you will face some issues so once we are getting the reference of the local storage in this particular nodes variable that is the ls nodes after that we need to here check for the condition condition so if ls nodes is not equal to null right if not equal to null then we want to perform the ls nodes for each so here i will be using the for each that is this one for looping the things so it has a one counter then there is the anonymous callback so here i will be using the note text if you know the for each loop this is the for each and inside of that we need to start the block of the code so i have actually started the wrong block of the code inside of that we need to start the block of the code now we are actually not getting any error instead of that we need to call the add node function because we want to add the node which is actually the ui part of the node that is the reason now if i control save it and now if i enter here some data which is ftm now if i refresh it you can see still it is not actually doing anything because we need to call this particular load node function so here we need to use the load so it is actually a load nodes function because we are actually loading multiple nodes so here we need to call this function that is the reason nothing is actually happening so i have actually changed the name of the function now we actually call the load node function now if i control save it you will see nothing because we need to specify more code inside this particular load nodes function all right so this is the if condition under the if condition we are actually calling the add node function and also after calling the add node function we need to set the values inside these particular nodes okay so what we want to do here we need to create some variables which is nodes is equal to and then here we need to use the document that is this one document dot query selector all and instead of that we need to specify like load dot note and text area so this particular note is actually denoting these conditions that is the condition for this note because the variable remember this is actually the node so the same condition because under the node we have the text area so we want to display the ui part so that is the reason we actually getting the reference of the node and the text area as well and after that we need to here use the constant which is for the last nodes last node so for that we need to add here a logic a little bit like this nodes which is the array because we are getting everything in a form of array means this is actually treated as an array because there are multiple like nodes like more than one and two so those will be treated as an array so that is the reason we are actually here using the array notation and then we need to use the nodes dot length minus one so that we are actually getting everything at the perfect position so what i mean here if i enter here first then this will be the second and if i refresh it so whenever we actually load the nodes from the local storage then we are getting these particular nodes in a proper order so that thing will be achieved by using this particular condition all right after that we need to actually use this last note value which is the dot value is equal to note text because the text that is actually presented inside this particular looping element because we are actually looping by using the for each so the text will be present inside this particular note text and then we are actually setting it with the use of these particular logics all right now if i control save it and once if there is if condition is executed then we want to execute the else block so here we need to specify the else block instead of that we need to again call the add node if there is nothing present inside the local storage then still we want to display a blank node 
if I control save it and if I refresh it, you can see there is things are actually not working. But if I actually add a add node function, means click on the add node button, if I enter your data and if I refresh it, we are not able to see the nodes. So there is any like there is some problem here. If I actually increase the size of the windows, if I press the F12 key here. If I come back to console, so here we're actually getting some error like uh, type error ls.note function is not defined. So why are we are actually getting error here ls.note? So we're actually getting the error. Okay, so here I made a typo. It is like for each note for egg. If I control save it and now if I actually come back to the browser, you can see now our code is working because this data is actually stored inside the local storage of the browser. If I press the F12 key here and if i just simply go to here like application under the local storage you can see here we are actually getting the data if i just remove it and call it as first you can see it's actually instantly updated now if i refresh it you can see it's actually still present if i add another note you can see that is actually also added inside the browser all right now if i remove this particular line of the code like if i comment it out and if i now refresh it you can see we are facing some issues because we are not able to add the nodes in a proper way. So that is the reason this particular logic is actually very important. And how I ended up with this particular idea? I just experimented a lot with this particular project. All right. And when I refresh the page, then we are able to see the blank node. If I don't call the add node function here, control save it. So if I just simply first remove every node, or if I refresh it, then you can see there is no blank note is appearing, which is the default behavior of this particular application. If I remove everything, then still we are getting this particular blank note. So this is because we actually need to call this add node function in the else block of the load nodes. If there is nothing is present inside the local storage, then still we want to display a one note UI, I can an empty node so that a user can enter the data. Okay, so that's it for this particular project, which is a note taking application. So if you like this module, then please leave your review. So your review motivates me to create more awesome content like this. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you very much.